thinking. Uh, at first, it's shocking, but then eventually over time, we would all just obey it, give a pause and obey it eventually. And I think it's, it, they, they say such for Okay, so the imam in Cologne, a so-called imam, the terrorist imam says girls were raped because they were half naked and wore perfume. Where's the outrage from the U.N.? Where's the outrage from uh, uh, the protector of women, Hillary Clinton? How come she has nothing to say about a statement like that? She had phony through and through. That's why. I agree. He's, no, no, I, I disagree with you. He's not trying to desensitize us. The Salafist imam who said that the women were raped by gangs of Arabs in Germany were raped because they were half naked and wearing perf perfume. He said dressing like that is like adding fuel to the fire. He said it because he believes it. He said because he believes it, he's blaming the victim. And instead of throwing him out of Germany and rounding up the immigrants who came in and throwing them out, they're blaming the women for dressing like Western women do. I mean, you know, this idea, by the way, if they got what they deserved, used to be prevalent in America in the 60s. Did you know that? There were many people in America who said the same thing. Did you know that? Oh, God, no, I didn't, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wonder where the true blue conservatives stand on that one. Should women wear um, dresses that go down to their ankles? If you ask the average liberal girl why she won't be a con vote a conservative, they laugh at you. They throw a glass of wine in your face. And what, do you want me to wear a dress down to my ankles? Braid my hair? What do you want me to do, put a cross on and braid my hair and, and just be a, uh, a, a broodmare? That's what they think. When you say conservative to the average college girl, they think that uh, you know, they're going to put them in a dress down to their ankles. They have to put on a cross and they have to become someone's broodmare. That's what they think about conservatives. They don't know anything more about the value system than that. That's what I'm saying. We have to educate people. And then on the other side, you have the low information voters on the right who say that Trump is not conservative enough, not a conservative enough. Well, they're like the community organizers that work for Barack Obama. They're the, they're the community organizers for Ted, to Ted Cruz. So I think we've covered that. We learned today that the phrase low information voter was originally written by the political scientist and pollster Samuel Popkin. He used the term low information in 91 when he used the phrase low information signaling in his book, The Reason Voter. Unfortunately, most of you think that the, the phrase low information voter applies only to liberals. But I'm sorry to tell you what I've learned over the last few months is it applies to many, many other groups, including so-called right-wingers, who really have no information about what they're saying. And they blindly follow the lead of, I don't know who, I don't know who they're following the lead by attacking Trump like this. Probably the Cruz uh, campaign. One last mention of this for a minute. I told you I live near the water a lot of the time, you know, in one of the, my properties. And I love the birds, and I watch the birds, and I see the birds feeding on the herring that are laying their eggs along, along the rocks of the breakwater. I mean, they're flocking by the thousands and eating the eggs, right? I notice something that happens. If I walk out on my deck and make a sudden move, one bird, all it takes is one bird to get spooked and fly, all thousands of the birds right up and down the, the jetty will fly away from that one bird being spooked. And I learned something from that. I learned what herd behavior is. I learned what bird behavior is. And let me tell you something. Many people on the right are just like those birds. Don't assume it's only on the left that herd behavior or bird behavior. I am seeing it coming from the right. Someone spooks one bird and all of them are already flying away. I'll be back. All right, race to the White House. That's all you want to talk about. So here for the Democrats, here's some, uh, here's some red meat. Bernie Sanders opens up 60 to 33 lead against Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire poll. The communists from New York... The ILGW union organizer type, the spritzer type, the corned beef on club, the pickle man, the seltzer man, Bernie Sanders, opens up a 60 to 33 lead against Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire poll. That's good news. That is very good news because the fanatics who are coming out for Bernie probably represent a very small percentage of the overall electorate, which gives us an absolute victory if Trump is the candidate opposing him. That's a huge lead, a 27-point lead over uh, Hillary Clinton. 
That's a huge deal. And that shift for Bernie, the commie, comes despite the Clinton campaign waging an all-out blitz on New Hampshire since the new year. That's amazing. That's a big deal. Town halls, rallies, and organizing events. Clinton using uh, actresses, Lena Dunham, don't know who that is. U.S. soccer star, Abby Wambach, don't know who she is. Senator Al Franken, I think he used to be a comedian. And women's tennis legend, Billie G. King, I think she's still around. Along with her daughter, Chelsea, the great newscaster. And, of course, her former uh, husband, <laughs> Bill Clinton. Didn't help. Polar's, she's dropping like a uh, loose lip sink ships, right? People don't like her. And so the Democrats don't know what's going on. The hearts are saying, vote for Bernie. Good, go, Bernie, go. Because in a general election, it's 85-15 against Trump. Major winter storm to hit East Coast this weekend. Here's what to expect. I think snow. Here's what to expect. That's a news story. Major winter storm to hit East Coast this weekend. There's never been a winter storm before, by the way, in January. This is the first one. Like when I went to school as a kid in the East Coast, there were no snowstorms. They only occurred now because of Al Gore. There were no shovels, there were no boots, there were no galoshes, there was no snow trucks, no chains. What to expect? It's called white stuff comes down from the sky. It's called snow. What regions of the East Coast will be impacted? Uh, let's see. As far south as northern North Carolina, far north as Boston. In other words, a typical winter. That's all. Right? They're making it into a news story. This area, including Baltimore and Washington, D.C., will be hit hard. Two feet of snow. One to two feet. I loved it. When I was a kid. Now up in the Sierra, when I moved out here and I saw eight-foot drifts, that was something for me. That was like God's country. When the first time I ever saw an eight-foot drift up in the Sierra Nevada, I never saw anything like it coming from a place where a foot of snow was a lot. And I used to love to see the cars get snowed in when the, the sanitation trucks would come by and push the, clean the streets. If you hadn't gotten your car out of the way, they buried you. Robert, did you have that where you grew up? Let's say your father parked his car along the street and it snowed. If you didn't get it out in the morning, which unto itself was pretty hard, you needed chains and slush and the shovel and the salt and the whole family pushing the car over the snowbank. Forget about it. I mean, the trucks would come. They didn't care if you were there. They would plow you right in. If it froze over, your car was like in a, right, like in a tomb, like a mausoleum. They'd find it in the spring, thawing out with like Sarah Palin's dried moose meat in there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say a moose <laughs> went in your car for a little, yeah. Strong winds could gust to 30 to 50 miles. Now a coastal flooding is another concern, blah, blah, blah. When will the storm hit? Storm will first hit parts of the southern east coast, mainly Kentucky and Tennessee, on Thursday night into Friday morning before moving east toward the mid-Atlantic, blah, 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 blah. Next winter storm. So why is this a news story? Can anyone explain to me how, how the weather became major news? Answer, propaganda. The stock market clawed back from an earlier gigantic 500-point dro point drop. It was down a monster, a monster drop. It was down 566 points in the beginning of the day. It closed only down 22 points. That means the big money came in after you ran out. After the hedge funders drove you out with fear, they came in and bought it up and made a fortune on the shorts and the longs and the buys and the sells. Have you seen the show Billions on um, Showtime? Raise your hand if you've seen the show Billions on Showtime. I have. I love it. There's a few things that are too convenient, like, you know, the hedge fund guy's wife is the psychologist for the company who happens to work for the U.S. attorney. That That's not believable, and that she's S into S&M with the husband. They had to throw in the gratuitous lesbian sex and the gratuitous S&M, which I think diminishes the series, incidentally. I mean, I want to see that. I'll go to another channel. I, well, what is that? What do I have to work it into that for? Very well written, very well acted. The lead actor in the show Billions is played by Damien, I forget his last name, I do, Lewis. He played in Homeland as the turncoat uh, guy. I recommend it. Most of you don't have Showtime. Most of the uh, right wing have no Showtime, no HBO. In fact, they have no television. They have no typewriters and no Internet. They only have a shortwave radio on which they listen to my show. They have a crackly, actually, beyond shortwave. I, I actually built radios when I was a kid. I, did you ever build a crystal radio, uh, Robert, when you were young? When I was a kid, a boy scout, I had to build a crystal radio in my basement. Would you believe it? 
Am I the only show host in America who actually built radios as a child, as a, as a Boy Scout? Here, headline Fox News, unfriendly fire, Trump crews take off gloves in most conservative fight. See? In other words, who is, who is the real conservative? Just what we've been talking about today. And uh, I think we've covered it. And I maybe I've helped you understand something. Maybe I haven't. Maybe I've helped you understand. Look at this in Iraq, what's going on. Erasing Christianity. The ISIS wave of destruction claims Iraq monastery, the oldest in the world, and uh, the useless UN did nothing. They took the monastery, they blew it up, and they reduced it to rubble. And this 1,400-year-old monastery survived assaults by nature and man. This monastery was a place of worship re recently for U.S. troops. Did you know this? This enemy of ISIS called ISIS blew it up. They're destroying everything from human life to civilian life. Everything in their path. They are a virus on the planet. They're not an alternative offshoot of Islam. They are a virus. The Islamic State is a virus. And what has Obama done to stop them? Nothing. And they're wiping out a religion called Christianity that has endured in the region for 2,000 years. And your UN does nothing about it. Your president does nothing about it. Your president mentions nothing about the genocide being committed against the Christians. Your president has permitted Iraq's Christian population to drop. Are you ready for this? Tell your pastor about it. Your president, Hussein Obama, has permitted Iraq's Christian population to drop from 1.3 million to 300,000. I, I, it's, it's staggering. A million Christians have been killed or driven out of the Middle East because your president didn't lift a finger. Basically, he was bombing uh, pharmaceutical plants in the desert. So there it is. Doesn't matter to anybody. S troops prayed there, now it's gone because he withdrew troops precipitously and left behind nothing to protect the country from the, the maniacs. They've used bulldozers, heavy equipment, sledgehammers, explosives, turning the monastery into this field of gray-white dust. There is nothing left. It was built between 582 and 590 A.C. It was a holy site for Iraqi Christians for centuries. It was part of the Mideast Chaldean Catholic community. Here's another one for those of you who think Islam is a religion of peace. In 1743, as many as 150 Christian monks who refused to convert to Islam were massacred under orders of a Persian general and the monastery was damaged. Yeah, religion of peace, my eye. It's a religion of conquest. Everybody who studied it knows that. That's why Trump is the only hope we have to save America. Don't stand in his way with your purity. Savage.